Hi, my name is Jamie and welcome back to JBug Jamie. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed the last review I did of episode one of Greenleaf. Let's get started. I'm going to be reviewing episode two, The Baptism. Episode two was really good because we got a chance to really understand why Grace Greenleaf is so, is so passionate about making sure that her Uncle Mac is brought to justice. Although I really feel like it's something deeper there to me, deeper as far as a personal issue with Grace. She says that it's about her sister Faith, so I'm going to go with that right now. But actually, what Grace did this episode, she went and she reached out to, she found, because of her Aunt Mavis, she was able to track down two of the victims or see two of the victims in the profile. And she actually approached one of the mothers and tried to talk to her about what happened with her daughter. But the mother was like, I don't want to talk about this. We buried this. It's over. I want to know if the mother was actually paid by Uncle Mac to keep quiet. Because if so, that would explain why she's so on his side and so passionate about calling him and making sure he knows that his niece is out to get him. So I wonder if she was paid to be quiet. But anyway, so Grace reaches out to the family and tries to talk to the daughter. She has no blessings with that. We also see that the Nelson guy from episode one is a cop who is accused of murdering a young child, a young man who was innocent and they actually wanted to involve the church in all of this as far as he wanted to speak with the pastor and kind of give his side of this not really give his side of the story but just you know how the church and the world and politics they all kind of come together in a way because the church is in the community so people lean on the pastors for help with certain situations and that is a double-edged sword personally when you involve the church in community things like that as far as violence and things like that with between the police and the people in the community it's really the way that Greenleaf approached the episode episode three and four because I've just watched four but the way the way that Greenleaf approached the killing of young black innocent youth and the correlation between the church I'm, I am glad that they addressed it, but it's really, it's really, it was really tough to watch because I think it, it would have been more effective if the cop had been white because not saying that it's not effective having a black cop, but the way that people, people have a hard time understanding that Communities are upset is deeper. Communities being upset is deeper than just a cop killing an innocent youth. It goes it goes way back to having this deep rooted hatred for a group of people or having a stereotype of how you think they're going to be and you reacting before anything even happens. Just having a feeling that a person is the way in your mind you've been taught that they are. So it would have been really cool if they would have really approached it that way and kind of showing why there's so much racial tension between certain communities and cops and what the root of how this all started and stereotyping and not stereotyping, just all of that, where it begins. It would have been really great to see Greenleaf really tackle that issue, but I know they probably don't want to offend certain people certain groups of people but it if you're gonna tell the story you gotta really go back and really get to the root of where it started because it's the saying that you if you don't know where you've been you don't know where you're going so it's always a roots to why situations happen in communities but getting back to episode two so we got a chance to see that pastor bishop greenleaf is not so honest because in episode one he said that he didn't even know the Nelson guy. He didn't even know that the Nelson guy tried to contact him, which was an untruth. And so he lied so freely. I'm sorry to look at, I already was looking at the bishop with like a side eye, but really to see how he just, the lies that come so freely and so quickly. I know we're all human and we, 
we all make mistakes that's mistakes that's said all the time but we got to remember that there are people in the bible who lived a life that they went out preaching about especially paul if you read the story of paul you'll see that he really did try to live that life of sanctity and living the word of god and then for people who don't believe you probably won't understand this but just read the story of paul paul was one of those individuals who did who was able to live a life for God. I'm getting off on the tangent. So going back, I'm just going to address the points that were important to me in this episode. So the pastor lies about knowing Nelson and everything like that. They move forward. And so Grace goes to dinner or she meets up with Noah's fiance and Noah. And I really, like I said before, I really wish they would have introduced Noah's fiance is more confident because you can kind of tell that she's very she has like an uh, insecure confidence like insecure in one in many aspects but portrays a confident spirit it's, it's like you could tell she's threatened by Noah's relationship with Grace okay getting back to what I was saying I'm going to skip over to when Grace Greenleaf sits down to watch the video of the young girl who was actually Sounds like she was raped by Uncle Matt. That was very hard to just stomach knowing that this man has been doing this for so long and has been able to get away with it, get away with it. And not only that, it seems like members of his family knows that he's been going around raping young girls in the church and possibly even family members. Like I said before in episode one, he was looking at his nieces strange. And I just feel like, wow, like he's been able to do this so long. He has such confidence that nothing will happen. It was really just mind-blowing. And to know that the bishop knows about this, the wife, whom I just love you, Lynn Whitfield, the wife knows about it, it was just really hard to stomach. But I'm glad that Grace is, like, really getting out there, and she's like, I am going to stop this guy no matter what. And I, I like that she's working with, her aunt Mavis we got to see uncle Mac I think that's the next episode so I don't want to skip so anyway I don't want to skip so what I will say about this episode also I'm all over the place so just bear with me my reviews will be I'll jump from one place to another Jacob and Carissa I really like how their story is developing Carissa actually went to sit down with first lady May and had tea and they were picking out the recipe for, I guess they're having an upcoming event for the church. And one thing I will say, I really did not like how pompous First Lady May was about the food and about portion control. Some of the statements that she made, which she's right about. We should look at our health and everything like that. That's so important. That's another topic for another day. But she was very arrogant in, in the way, they're very arrogant people and the way that they interact as far as they're pompous and I really wish they would come back down to earth and understand that all that is not even important especially when you're dealing with the kingdom of God that's the least of his fancy cars private jets all of that is not even on his radar but we got a chance to see Carissa's relationship with Lady May we got a chance to see as far as why Carissa is so nosy when it comes to wanting to know about if Grace is going to stay on and why she stayed on. She really is looking out for her family and she really wants Jacob to kind of step up and take on more of a leadership role because she's probably looking at, Jacob, I want you to have all of this when, I, when Bishop James meets, I don't know if, he, I don't know if, Bishop, if there's redemption for you, but when you meet your maker, I think Carissa is looking out for, you know, she wants the money. So also, we got a chance to see Charity and her husband. And yes, you can tell that Kevin is attracted to the same sex. I don't know why Charity can't tell. You could just tell. And I wish he would just live in his truth and be honest with Charity. So I'm going to end this episode by saying that I really did enjoy certain parts of episode two 
I was so glad that they continued to really let us see the characters develop. Each episode, it seems like they're developing more and more. So I will be back with my review of episode three. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye. There was a couple of scenes in Greenleaf that had me like...